Welcome back into the Vallejo Center, where I'm joined now for Coach's Comments, brought to you by Southside Auto Tech. I'm joined with uh, Cody Chupp. And, Coach, tonight it just seemed like, whether it was the first period, second period, third period, it seemed like Tri-City kind of jumped out to the faster start and put you guys behind the eight ball. Uh, what did you see from your angle there on the bench? Uh, they're a team that skates well and transitions well. And, you know, our 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 pre-scout was about our puck management and, and ultimately making them play 200 feet. They're not overly dissimilar from uh, USA that we just saw last weekend where uh, if you give them free transition from the neutral zone, your blue line or, or their blue line, uh, it's four guys jumping and, and going quickly and they make plays off the rush. And so er, early on uh, through major portions of this game, it was it was self-inflicted puck play and you know we find a way to, to battle back in the first with it what's basically a simple play you know Boleyn makes a great defensive play moves that thing north right away uh, aggro with good patience and, and finds a way to finish and, and we come out of that first period um, you know I, I, in my opinion dodging a bullet a little bit as far as uh, finding a way to get one back and, and we're back in the game where and then we come out in the second and it was uh, two poor puck plays and, and decisions that caused turnovers that ended up in the back of our net. So they're a team that you have to make play 200 feet. And when we were able to put pucks in and get on pressure, good things happened for us. You know, the, the chances that we created were, were very simple, hard work chances, which is get it, move it low to high, get it to the net. I mean, that's the name of the game. Continuing to wear down their defensive core is, is crucial because they skate well. Um, and, and they have the ability to join and play offense, you want to make contact with their bodies every time they touch the puck to start to wear them down as they go so that they have to start to think about that next play that they're going to make and know that they're going to get hit every time. And, and we have to do a more consistent job as a group um, in our details. And our details are uh, being hard on the forecheck, not backing off. Because when you back off against a team like this, very similar to USA last weekend, their speed is, is very difficult to slow down and to angle them through the neutral zone when you're skating backwards or you're starting flat-footed is a difficult task. So uh, we have to do the work on the front end so that we don't get caught on the back end. This was a chippy game tonight. You know, this is the first time you guys saw Tri-City since December, um, but it seems like this kind of familiarity and rivalry between these two teams just seemed to pick up where it left off. Uh, you know, there was a lot of opportunities on the power play, um, some shortened. Um, seemed like, you know, I know we've talked about simplicity um, in terms of, of just what makes this power play work. And it seemed like tonight there was a lot of, uh, when the team was on the attack and the, on the power play, it seemed like there was a lot of uh, passing uh, around the edges. Uh, you know, what again, what do you guys have to do to try to, again, take advantage? Because this was a power play we talked about last weekend that was kind of in a hot streak before that Saturday game. Uh, what do you have to do to get back to that? Yeah, I think puck movement is the biggest key, and puck movement allows us to start to penetrate the inside, and that's that's what's crucial on a power play is you can look fantastic passing around the perimeter, but um, you know credit to Tri-City doing a good job of clogging up that middle. For us, it's about the speed of the puck, and anytime we want to hold on to it and start to wait for the perfect pass or uh, pass up the first option to try to look for another option, then it just slows everything down. It allows them the PK to reset start to get into their turn down and their pressure and what we want to do is is uh, you know the same as five on five pull them to an area move it and then we start to penetrate into the into the scoring area so um, our our puck movement has to improve and, and increase uh, the speed so that we can start to work pucks into that harder area um, you know I, I i thought we generated some chances and hit some posts tonight that could have uh, could have made this game closer than it was um, they hit some posts as well so that's not a you know, this game was uh, closer than the score. I, I think uh, we need to do a better job as a group heading into Tuesday. Uh, we have the advantage here. We play the same team on Tuesday. We know what to expect. Uh, we know the areas that we have to be better. Now it's, it's up to us to, to be willing to do it. And, and you know, I think uh, the biggest thing is w the way we want to play, how we want to accomplish success is, is very simple. And uh, some of that's a product of the number of guys that have moved in and out and, and, and different things, but we're not asking guys um, to play a game they're not capable of. We're asking them to buy in uh, to a simplicity uh, that allows us to be successful. And if you look at that third period, you know, Grant Johnson's line was uh, the most productive line for us, and it was all simplicity. Um, you know, and it, get it, 
move it low to high, get it to the net with a body standing there, and, and good things tend to happen. And, um, you know, congrats to Arlo, by the way, on his first goal, and uh, I thought he played well in the lineup for the first time. So. Yeah, he beat me to the punch there. That was going to be uh, the next one for you. Uh, Arlo Merrick comes in. You know, he's a guy with some central scouting hype. Uh, we talked about him during the week, and, you know, it seemed like he, like you said, built some confidence there uh, with his line in the third period, gets that big goal. But, uh, you know, just for him, you know, in terms of moving forward here, you know, when we talked during the week, we talked about how this is an opportunity for him to get acclimated. How big is that getting that first goal in that first game in the USHL? Yeah, it's huge for the confidence. I think it, everything um, starts to become a little easier when you get the monkey off your back early. And, uh, you know, he's a kid that uh, where he's coming from, he's used to having some success on the offensive side. Um, so, you know, coming into a, a new environment where everything happens a, a lot faster for him, uh, it's nice to get the first one out of the way. And, you know, if he, he keeps playing the way he um, he did tonight, especially in that third period, uh, he'll continue to find the back of the net because he was willing to do those little things right, and uh, it's a credit to him. So uh, he's in the same position as, as a lot of guys in our room and, you know, fighting for their future uh, in the organization and in, the, in a tryout type process. So um, credit to Arlo for uh, stepping in and, and being an uh, impact guy tonight. Last one for you, and it involves one of the things you mentioned earlier, the two posts. I think both of them came from Hunter Skinner shots. He's another guy that's been talked about as a player possibly moving forward uh, when, uh, since you guys acquired him from uh, Muskegon. Uh, seemed like tonight he played with a pretty solid edge. I mean, he threw the body pretty well out there, uh, made a couple plays in his own zone, and then, again, hit the post twice. And like you said, maybe a different game if, if even one of those goes. But um, what have you seen from him, you know, just as you, you come down into the final month of play here, um, you know, he's a young D, he's an old one, but uh, what have you liked and what do you want to see from him here down the stretch? He, he's extremely athletic for starters. Um, you know, so for Stars fans that uh, have watched the Kriegers over the past couple of years, he's got a lot of those same uh, athletic qualities where uh, his feet uh, can allow him to be uh, more aggressive in certain situations because of his ability to recover. Um, he's a guy that played forward for most of his life and then, uh, transitioned to D only a year or two ago. So, uh, you know, when he was in Muskegon, I, th I think he played forward at times. So um, he has some offensive ability, some some uh, comfortability in the offensive zone, and which is going to allow him to, to chip in on offense, which is, is, is huge for a defenseman to, to have that ability with his skating. Also allows him to join rushes, and, you know, that, that post uh, that he hit um, in the second period, was you know joining the rush late, uh, good communication over the line. You know, we made a simple play to the inside to him, and and he hit the bar. So uh, the biggest thing with him is is just continuing to develop his his defensive game. And, and you know I don't want to sound like a broken record, but uh, defending is, is is about simplicity. You know keep your body position to the inside, use your stick, um, always stay in between, and then just allow that stick to do the work. Start to dictate where you want him to go, and uh, you know that's. Hunter is, is, when I say he's similar to the Kriegers, you know, sometimes guys with really good feet and athletic ability, uh, it's hard to calm those things down at times and just stay patient and, and trust the, trust that you're putting them into an area where the, the puck carrier is going to be uncomfortable. And, and, you know, I think that's where Hunter will continue to develop. He's, he's a great kid. He loves video. He loves being coached. So um, he'll continue to improve as he goes here. And uh, we're excited about him and his future. All right, coaches, as always, we appreciate the time. We look forward to talking to you next week. Thank you.